Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to do a line graph just like you can do in Excel like I'm showing on screen but in R using ggplot2 and dplyr and scales to allow the grouping of the dates into month and year. So without further ado let's head over to our studio. So just a quick overview of what I'm going to be just be covering. I'm just going to be loading in the data set that I've been using throughout the series. That can be found in the description below. Also, if you want to learn how to install Excel files, again, the link to the video is in the description below. And then we're going to use Tidyverse to, to load in the packages that we need, which are going to be ggplot2, dplyr and scales. And then I'm going to be filtering the data by UK, showing you what the data will look like at certain points then grouping the data by month and year, showing you what the line graph will look like without grouping the data first, grouping the data, and then finally building out our line graph. So let's crack on with loading in the Excel file, which we're going to be using. And then what we need to do is install Tidyverse. And you can install Tidyverse by typing in install.packages in brackets and quotation marks tidyverse and then once that's loaded in we need to load in ggplot2 dplyr and scales ggplot2 is for creating of the graph and then for all the formatting that we're going to be doing and grouping of data and filtering that's what we need dplyr for and scales so if we highlight those and then run we now have those loaded in and if you need to load them in, just type in library and then in brackets, type in ggplot2, dplyr and scales. So to make this a little bit more easier to read, I'm going to filter the data set by United Kingdom. And I'm doing that by first creating what I want to call my new data set. And then you use the arrow and the hyphen. And then you can start writing out your formula to create your new data set. So all you have to do is get your data set that you have loaded in, which is this one here. And then you need to do the pipe function. And then from there, you want to filter as your function. And then within brackets, we want to use location, which is there. And then we want it to equal United Kingdom only. And with R, an equal sign is two equal sign. So whenever you want to actually equal something, use two equal signs not just one so if we highlight that and then run we now have our new data set that is only united kingdom so now we have the data set loaded in and created and filtered by uk we can just see how it looks when we create a simple line graph with date on the x-axis and then new cases on the y-axis so what you want to do is then put in what the new table or data set is called and then we want to pipe into the function of ggplot and then you do an open bracket and then you put in aes and then you want to state what you want your x-axis and your y-axis to be in this case we're using date and new cases and then you do close bracket twice and then whenever you create a new line on ggplot you'll need to use plus sign and then we're going to be using geo underscore line which is for creating line graphs so if we run this now we'll get a nice little plot down here just like that. So that's great if you want to be able to just see on a daily basis how it all looks for a trend purpose. But say if you wanted to see it all grouped by how it looks in a month period, then we need to create a column that will show us the month. So if we move down to here, I can start to show you how to add a column which can just give you the month as additional column on your table. Now I covered this in a previous video around the bar chart. But I'll cover it again. So what I've done here is use the data set that I've created, which is filtered by UK. You then use a dollar sign to then sort of state what you want the new column to be called. In this case, we're going to call it month. And again, we do the arrow and the hyphen. It's going to be stating where we're going to put the new column on the data set. So it hard codes it into this data set. And then what we're going to do is type out as dot date, which is a formatting function. And then we're going to use within brackets cut, which is going to say, when do we want to cut the data from? And as we want to cut it from month, it means that any of the dates, say for January 2021, it will say the 1st of January 2021 instead of the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 
because you've cut it on the month and then it made the days all revert to one. So that way you can get the formatting for month and year. So then once you've put in cuts, then you do another open bracket and then you point to which column within the data set you wish to do the cut on. And in this case, we want to use the date column. So we use the table name and then again, another dollar sign and then the column name, which is date and then a comma. And then we use breaks equals month. And then that will give us a column at the end with month and year with all days showing as zero one. So now if we look at the data now, we can see all February 5th, 6th, all zero one, zero one. So now you'll be thinking, great, now we've got that grouped. I can now just run basically the same line graph again and it would work. But this time, so all I've done again is just created the part where I've got the data set and then piped it into ggplot. And then we've gone with the x axis with month and then new cases on the y axis. And we want the labels to be new cases. So then this allows us to then be able to link the new cases to the month and then we add in the plus sign again and then we do the geom line and if we run this we don't get a very pretty result so as you can see it's tried to create what is basically a line chart but all it's done is kind of create some sort of stepped sort of line chart and it's not quite doing what we wanted it to do and the reason being is even though we have month and year as our grouped column the summing doesn't quite give you what you want and the workaround to get this to happen is by grouping the data so to do the grouping what i've done is created a table with grouped at the end as our name and then put the arrow and the hyphen and then i started writing in the function that we need to do to be able to group so what i've done is taken the data set that we created which is filtered by uk i've then piped in to say group by and then add in what I want to group by, which is the month column and then pipe in summarize. And then I created a sum of new cases. Now, if, if I was to run it from that point there, it would create a column which would say month and a column that would say sum bracket new cases bracket. Now, I wanted new cases to be the name and not some new cases bracket like it's shown there. So what I've done is then pipe in select and this allows us to change the names or reorder columns. And then I put month as the first column. And then for the second column, I've changed the name that it's decided to make that into because I've created summarize and then called it new cases. So if we run this now, we have our new table. As you can see, we have our mum and we have our new cases all summed up. So now we've got our data set ready. We can start building out our graph. So like I've done before, I've taken the data set that we've created and then I've piped in ggplot and then made month as the x-axis and new cases as the y-axis. I've typed in geom underscore line again. And this time to match the Excel example I showed earlier, I've created a blue line and made the size a little bit bigger than the standard. And you do this by typing in color and then equals blue. You can have any color you want, but I decided to have blue because that matched the example. And then we have the comma and then for size, you just type in size equal sign and then put in the size you want. Now, if we just run this now, we'll have a better looking graph than this. And there you go. Now that's a lot better than the graph we had before. However, it's still not great. We have scientific numbering on the side and we still don't have all the months and years across the bottom. So to fix the scientific numbering or to give you the numbering so you have a comma separator in it, this is when we start using the scales library. And this is where you can start to manipulate and edit how you want the layout of your Y axis to look and also your X axis. So all I've done here is use scales underscore Y for the Y axis underscore continuous. And then this allows me to start doing some formatting. So what I want to happen is I want to label the numbers on the side with a comma between a thousand separator. So you type in labels equals comma. And then I want to add in how much I want to be able to see gaps of the overall numbers of cases on the left 
So in this case, I want it to go up to 1.5 million, but I want each separator to happen at every 100,000. So to do this, we use breaks again, and then we do equal sign. And then for sequence, we want to start at zero and then comma, and then where we want it to go to, which is 1.5 million here. And you don't need to put the commas in because this is the formatting will happen here. And then we want to do, what do we want to keep going up by each increment? And in this case, 100,000. So once we type that in, we can run and see how the chart looks now. And now we have more numbers to be able to give us an idea of what the numbers are in the grouping of each month and year. Now, as I mentioned down here, we still don't know roughly, we can sort of guess which ones are the months as we know it's January and that's July, but being able to see between, we can kind of go, yeah, maybe that's fair, March, April, May, June, but you know, it's not as clear. You have to work a little bit to be able to work out which month's which. And also I like to have months that start with the three letters of the month and then have the year in it. So again, we go back to our scales library and this time we are going to use scales underscore X underscore date because we're using the X axis and we're going to be focusing on as date as our formatting. And then within brackets, we want to change what the labeling is going to be of the dates here. And that's when we use the function date underscore labels and we do equal sign. And then we give the formatting within quotation marks with a percentage sign before each function that we're going to put in. So what I'm basically saying here is use the small version of the wording of the month. And that's when you use B. If you wanted the number, you would use M. And if you wanted the full month name, then you would use a capital B. But because I want the three letter version, I'm using a lowercase B. And then I want it to be split by a hyphen. You could leave a space, a gap, a backslash, however you wish. And then I just want the year to be the last two digits. So 20 and 21 for 2020 and 2021. And that's when I use a lowercase y instead of if I wanted all four digits of the year, then I'll use an uppercase y. You do that all within quotation marks. And then we want to say how we want to split this by. So at the moment it's splitting by six months. I want it to do it by one month. So then we do breaks equals and then one month. And then that gives us each month showing up. So if we run this now, we now have all the months under here. Now that's great, but we can see there's a lot of overlapping. And so we need to clean this up a little bit to make it readable. And how we do this is by using themes. And then themes allows us to be able to change the size, the angle, and there's various other parts. I won't go into all the detail here. I'll just do the parts that will just clean up. So then this is actually just readable. But all you need to do is type in themes. And then you want to point to which axis you want to actually apply the logic that we're going to be putting in here, which is going to be changing the size and the angle of the text. And so in this case, because it's the X axis, we're going to be doing axis dot text dot X, and then we're going to do the equal sign. And then we're going to use element underscore text to then be able to say, what are we going to do with the element of the text. And in this case, we are going to change the size and make that 10 and then change the angle to 90 degrees. So if we run this now, we can now see all the months and years without any overlapping. Now our graph is looking a lot better than it was at the beginning. You might still not be quite happy with the titles that you have on the x-axis and the y-axis. Like here, new cases doesn't have a space. Month is a lowercase m. So if you want to make some changes to those, you can use labs. And then all you need to do is just tell it, what do you want to change the name for in the x-axis? In this case, month in quotation marks. And then what you want to do with the y-axis, in this case, new cases, which is the same, just with the space in the middle. And now if we run that, we now have new cases with a space and month with a capital M. And then one thing you might want to know is now we can actually see what the months are, it'd be good to know which points these months actually happen. So what you can do is actually use another chart, in essence, the geom point, 
to give you dots from each point on the line to see each point for each month. So all you'd need to do is again, just add plus sign and start putting in geome underscore point, make the color blue, and then the size you wish to have. Size three seems to give a nice size. Otherwise, because I've made the line slightly bigger, the standard size wasn't noticeable when you create this without adding size. So now if we run this now, we now have all our little points to be able to make it a little bit more visually easier to see where each month sits. So thank you for watching this video. And as always, please like, share and subscribe. And please comment with any questions, any other videos you'd like me to cover. And as always, until next time.